House GOP Conference Chairwoman and Harvard alum, Elise Stefanik, joins us now. Elise, good to see you, Congresswoman, good to see you. Um, I just want to get your reaction. Um, after that exchange, we plan it for you. Now that Harvard is reportedly going to hire McGill. It's a disgrace. And we continue to see higher education promote anti-Semitic leaders and anti-Semitism. And as we start the school year this year, we need to see moral, strong leadership from higher education and these universities to condemn anti-Semitism and actually enforce their own rules. We saw the first day of classes at Cornell. There were vile anti-Semitic graffiti on campus. And yet you still have these universities not showing leadership. This is why it's so important legislatively that we use our oversight capacity when it comes to taxpayer dollars funding these institutions that we rein that in and hold them accountable. We need to ensure that President Trump's strong Title VI protections for Jewish students are enforced and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's Department of Education have refused to do that. You know, Biden Harris, uh, they gave late statements condemning uh, these uh, protests on college campuses. And now Harris has come out with a relatively bland statement uh, in regard to the murder of the six hostages that we just learned about uh, overnight. Um, your take in regard to whether Kamala Harris is going to protect Jewish students on college campuses, number one, but does she have the fortitude to protect Americans around the world um, after we see one of those six being an American citizen killed by Hamas uh, just yesterday? Well, first of all, my heart and the American people's heart goes out to all of the families of hostages, particularly uh, Hirsch Goldberg Poland's parents, who I've had the opportunity to meet with. I've met with many of the hostage families. This happened on Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's watch. This is a Biden-Harris administration that has turned their back on supporting Israel. We need to show strong support with Israel. There should be no daylight and using all of our efforts to bring home all these hostages. What did we see from Kamala Harris and Joe Biden that they withheld critical military aid at a very important time. It is a disgrace. And you asked the question, Sean, is she fit to protect our national security interests and American citizens around the world? The answer, the answer is an overwhelming no. She is not fit to serve the role as commander in chief. She has the, the fact that this is an American, an American Israeli citizen who lost his lives on their watch. It is a disgrace and it's going to go down in history as one of the darkest chapters of our national security policy. Look at this past week, Sean. This was the three-year anniversary of those 13 service members in Afghanistan, now 13 Gold Star families. And you have Kamala Harris's campaign politicizing this, not mentioning their names, not taking accountability for that catastrophic decision. She was the last person in the room advising Joe Biden, and yet they're criticizing Donald Trump for answering yes to the invitation from those families at Arlington. Kamala Harris is a disgrace, and we need to make sure she never becomes commander-in-chief. Disasters overseas. I want to talk about the disaster right here at home. When Republicans brought up the SAVE Act, which is an act that requires the proof of citizenship before you register to vote, Republicans voted for it. Uh, Democrats, uh, in large part, voted against it. Now Mike Lee has come out, and Donald Trump has agreed, that the SAVE Act should be included in legislation to fund the government uh, at the end of September, the end of the fiscal year. Uh, your House leadership, Elise, um, will leadership make sure that if you're going to register to vote, you're a citizen by way of the SAVE Act. And by the way, they've also said H.R. 2, which is the House bill to secure the border. Are we going to leverage money for making sure we have secure elections? Well, certainly the House Republicans are going to continue to push the SAVE Act. We're in discussions with the Speaker and all of our colleagues and Republicans support ensuring that we have legal and constitutional elections. What is telling, Sean, is that nearly every single Democrat opposed the SAVE Act. They want illegals to vote in this election. We need to make sure we have a secure election so that absolutely will be part of the government funding discussions. It's a principle that House Republicans will fight for, along with border security. What I do want to say is Chuck Schumer has failed to put anything on the floor when it comes to appropriations to ensure that only legal American citizens are able to vote in our elections. And he has refused to pass H.R. 2, which is the Secure the Border Act, to return to President Trump's effective policies uh, when it comes to securing our border. Kamala Harris owns this border crisis. She's trying to wipe away her history, as Joe Biden's open borders are. She owns the economic, national security, and humanitarian open border crisis that her policies yeah. created. Here's, and here's the problem. And you, and you get it. 
Um, but the fact that we have, and I'm here, I, in, I have individual knowledge of this, but also read reports of it, that you have illegals that are registering to vote, and you have the federal government and state governments and NGOs all out there trying to register illegals to vote in this election cycle. Huge problem, but the illegal doesn't actually have to vote. If they're registered, someone at least is going to vote for them, right? Someone's going to cast their ballot. And again, it undermines uh, the American uh, security in their own election and going, you know, if if I win, great. If I lose, I'm going to go home and fight hard again the next time. But if you don't trust the election because you're not sure that illegals aren't voting in it, it undermines our whole system of government. You're exactly right, Sean. It undermines our whole constitution. It undermines our system of government. People are losing faith in our elections because of how radicalized today's Democrat Party has become, shredding our constitution, shredding election integrity. This is why that vote was so important and it was so revealing in terms of the vast majority of Democrats want to allow illegals to vote in our election. The Republicans are unanimous in ensuring that illegals are not able to vote in our elections. That's why we're going to continue to fight very, very hard. And that's why we're working so hard to elect President Donald J. Trump, because he will stand up for the Constitution and he will sure ensure that we have elections based on the rule of law and not allowing illegals to vote. I have to imagine the American people agree with the SAVE Act, that you should be a a, a legal American citizen before you vote. And, And if Democrats want to shut down the government because they don't want to pass the SAVE Act, so be it. I think you win on that, Congresswoman. Uh, hopefully you have some tough conversations with the Speaker of the House, because I, I think America would stand behind you if you tied those two things together. Elise Stefanik, thank you for your great work and your friendship. We appreciate you joining the show. Thanks, Sean.